Greek fire was one of the most spectacular, terrifying technologies the game has ever seen. As if the Byzantine Empire wasn't overpowered enough, with its vast territories, giant capital city, huge army, and massive religious power, somehow they also found a way to get way ahead on the tech tree, gaining access to a tech that wouldn't see wide use again until the late 20th century. Many of the other players at the time were furious to see the tide of battle turn against them because of this secret tech, and begged the devs to nerf it. But just how overpowered was this weapon? Was it truly the meta-defining force players complained about? Or could it be played around or even countered? Well, let's take a closer look at the warfare meta in which this whole conflict took place. For several centuries, the Roman Empire was one of the most powerful players in the entire game. At its peak, they controlled not only the entire Mediterranean Sea, but also an absolutely gargantuan territory, spanning all the way from the British Isles to the Arabian Desert. However, by AD 480, the empire's giant size gave rise to a high level of instability, particularly in the western provinces, which were poorer and in a less easily defended position. And because of all this instability, the opportunistic barbarians seized control of this territory. The eastern provinces, however, were able to consolidate power and defend their territory much more effectively from the barbs. And so peace was made and a new age of the Roman Empire began, the Byzantine Age. With their western border more or less secure, the Byzantine Empire now had to turn its attention to their eastern opponents. For hundreds of years, the Byzantines were in a near constant stalemate against the Neo-Persian Sassanid Empire. Their repeated clashing was a massive drain on the resources of both empires. After centuries of war, both empires were in a weakened and vulnerable state, and it was at this moment that the devs introduced a new playable faction into the game, the Arabian Muslim Caliphate. At the time of its release, this was an incredibly powerful sieve, in part because of its incredible faith generation abilities, but also because of its unique great general unit called a Safe Allah, which granted the Caliphate's troops some incredible passive adjacency buffs, including bonus movement and combat strength on desert spaces. With the military bonuses of their Safe Allah, the Caliph's forces were able to swiftly outmaneuver and overwhelm the vulnerable Sassanid army, marking the complete and total defeat of the Sassanid Empire. The abrupt collapse of their longtime foe was quite unnerving to the Byzantine Empire, to say the least. They knew the Caliphate's sights would be turned towards them next, and considering they'd just gained control of the Sassanid Empire's vast treasury, it wasn't likely they had much desire to slow down. Try as they might, the Byzantine forces were about as successful as the Sassanids at repelling the Caliphate's military. However, while the Byzantine Empire's eastern territories, like Syria, fell, once their conquest progressed out of the desert and into the Mediterranean, things became less of a blowout and more of a stalemate. After some back and forth, the Byzantine capital, Constantinople, was placed under siege. Now, Constantinople was one of the most well-fortified cities in the entire game. While the Byzantine military tech was fairly standard for the time, the city's defensive architecture was still arguably the most sophisticated of any city in the game at that point, effectively invincible to all contemporary military tech. The only way to defeat such an impenetrable fortress was to starve its inhabitants, cutting off imported supplies by blockading both land and sea trade routes. While the Byzantine navy had generally been able to trade blow for blow against the Arabian navy, the conquering of Damascus, Sidon, Alexandria, and Cyrenaica meant that the Byzantine Empire had lost its main sources of science, culture, wealth, and strategic resources. In particular, losing control of the North African territories to the Arabian Empire meant that the Caliphate now had access to the iron, tar, and the scarce lumber necessary to construct more advanced galleys, called Shalandis. Meanwhile, the Byzantine economy and production was stagnating, and their ability to spawn their own naval units, called Dromones, was slowed. However, when Damascus and the rest of Syria was conquered by the Arabian Caliphate, a great scientist unit defected and fled to the Byzantines, bringing with them their advanced knowledge of chemistry. This scientist's unique Eureka ability granted their empire access to a hidden technology, a powerful incendiary weapon that could float on water and stick to enemy units, Greek fire. Now, the naval blockade around Constantinople was tight. Nothing got through, and the people of Constantinople were running low on supplies. The Caliphate's naval strategy consisted of close quarters combat, with several ships microed into a small area to allow for swift boarding of enemy vessels. This strategy had worked well for them and had routed the Byzantine and Egyptian navy several times. However, the tight, close quarters nature of their formations left them vulnerable to area of effect damage if such a weapon could ever be devised. 
the Byzantine Empire, low on resources, made what could have been their final stand against the blockade. They spent everything they had outfitting their dromones with siphons capable of spewing Greek fire. And so, on one fateful day, they launched their fleet and engaged the naval blockade. Despite being severely outnumbered and outmanned, the Byzantine dromones absolutely torched the Arabian navy. The blockade was utterly annihilated and the Byzantines once again were able to establish a presence in the Mediterranean reinvigorating their economy and stabilizing their empire. Meanwhile, the combination of a shortage of high-quality lumber for shipbuilding and religious rebel units spawning in their own territory meant that the Caliphate had to abandon its conquest of the Byzantines, at least for now. They did retain control of the Levant, as their land units still had maneuverability and combat strength superior to anything the Byzantines could muster. But on the sea, the napalm-armed Dromones were unbeatable, at least for now. Emboldened by their decisive victory over the Arabian navy, the Byzantines churned out a bunch more of these units and used them basically any time they got the chance. They used it against raiders and pirates, and to quash any and all rebellions. The damage to enemy morale simply from knowing their enemies had access to Greek fire was enough to ensure stability in the Byzantine Empire. No enemy who knew what they were capable of wanted to challenge them. During the 9th, 10th, and 11th century, there was a revival in the Byzantine Empire. It was a period of expansion and security. The empire's reach was at its largest since the Arabian Caliphate Empire first entered the game. Because of their dominance in the Mediterranean, there was an abundance of strategic and luxury resources, which greatly increased their income as well as their culture and science yields. This vast wealth did attract the attention of another empire, one that was somewhat new to the server, the Kievan Rus. They were a Viking naval power that had established itself in Eastern Europe in the 9th century and had begun raiding surrounding empires to build wealth. They apparently had not heard the tales of Greek fire, and decided to send almost their entire navy, around a thousand galleys, to raid the Byzantine capital. Most of the Byzantine navy was away on another mission, and only 15 dromones remained to defend the capital. Eager at the thought of what they believed was basically nothing standing between them and the Byzantine treasury, the Kievan Rus navy surrounded the small fleet of dromones, and indeed, the battle was quite one-sided, but not in the way the Kievan Rus expected. The Kievan Rus navy was obliterated, and the stragglers that hung around were mopped up by the returning fleet soon after. In the end, the Kievan Rus had to make peace on extremely unfavorable terms, and learned never to get so careless as to put their entire navy in range of the Byzantines' Greek fire. In fact, at this point, most of the Byzantines' opponents were starting to learn and adapt their playstyle to account for Greek fire. As overpowered as the Byzantine's napalm cannons were, counterplay did exist. The Byzantine Dromone's ranged attack required somewhat specific spacing to use optimally. The compound could be launched a fair distance, but it was by no means the longest ranged weapon available at the time. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, Greek fire couldn't be deployed at too close a range without risking splash damage and friendly fire. Avoiding the mid-range sweet spot was easier said than done, of course. But as the meta progressed, other players began incorporating ship-mounted ballistas and catapults into their navies, which could outrange the Byzantine siphons. Another strategy was to research equipment, materials, and armor that offered fire resistance bonuses. This would allow an attacking player to at least attempt to tank some of the damage from the Byzantine dromones, and then get within boarding range where they had more favorable odds in combat. This was a strategy that was eventually employed by the Arabian Caliphate, and even allowed them to capture and reverse engineer some aspects of Greek fire. While they never were able to perfect the siphon cannons that allowed for optimal use of the compound, they did master some of the basics and were able to use a version of it during the Crusades later on. So in conclusion, Greek fire was the most powerful weapon of the Byzantines. In fact, it was so meta-defining that in the 10th century, Emperor Constantine Porphyrogenitos wrote that liquid fire had been revealed and taught by God. However, as time passed and the player base advanced further into the tech tree, new technological advances in weaponry gradually pushed it out of use. The meta would change again in the 12th and 13th centuries, with the unlocking of the gunpowder technology. But that's a topic for another video, so you should really subscribe so you don't miss when it drops. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.